What's up everybody, Nate here from Out of the Basement bringing you a brand new action figure review. Today from Star Wars The Black Series we are taking a look at the brand new 40th anniversary Deluxe Rebel Commando. Finally we are getting another Rebel soldier in the line. It feels like it always takes Hasbro an extremely long time to get these guys out. We've been waiting for years for another one at this point. 2020 was actually the last time we got one with the Hoth Rebel Trooper. However, this time around, we certainly have a little bit of a controversial figure here, being that this is a deluxe, but as you can see in front of you, pretty much includes everything that we got just three short years ago with the Hoth Rebel, and that was a regularly priced standard figure. So we're also going to be asking the question today, is the Rebel Commando worth the deluxe price? Stay tuned to find out. So let's start by taking a quick look at the package here. It is on the standard retro Kenner style packaging. This one has quite a large bubble because of the deluxe nature of the figure and here's a quick look at the back as well you can see some of the other figures included in the same wave along with the generic bio and the barcode and all that good stuff for those wondering where we got this justin was lucky enough to pick it up from a local toy store called closet collectibles should definitely check them out if you are in the general illinois area so let's not waste a whole lot of time here we're going to go ahead and crack this figure open we'll take a look at all of the accessories and then the actual commando himself that one's for justin all right and starting off here with some familiar territory we have an unpainted blaster here which is already a mark against this figure deluxe price and the accessories are not painted completely unacceptable in my opinion this definitely should have had the little silver tip that it does on so many other released versions of this accessory and then we also have the longer rebel blaster as well which again unpainted really not setting a good precedent here for the rest of the figure starting out with two unpainted accessories here we do also have a brand new Endor Rebel backpack here, which is very nicely sculpted, really great details here. I definitely think it turned out nice looking. And they did actually put some paint on this, so we get a little bit of silver right there. And then on the top of the bag, and this hose is a nice, I think this is actually a different color of plastic, not actually painted, but still looks nice. And then we do get a little bit of silver paint on the ring there. so. At least they put some paint on the backpack, although you can see clearly there's a couple spots where they definitely could have put some more paint, uh, such as these buckles along on the straps here. So this figure is definitely already keeping up the trend with the latest Deluxe Black Series figures where the team will claim they are Deluxe because of the paint apps, but then we get these figures in hand and they're still missing paint apps. I feel like a broken record right now, but for $34.99, I think we definitely could have gotten a lot more paint on these accessories. And the last accessory here is an alternate faceplate for the figure itself. It gives it the Nick Sant or Old Man Rex look to the figure, whichever one you want to go with. But this is really nicely detailed. It's got a really nice sculpt to it. And I think they did a great job with the paint app on the beard and the eyes and everything like that. Looks really nice and clean. So this time around, the face is a removable plate, just like the Hoth Trooper, but they are not compatible, unfortunately. But the old man head just pops right in, and it looks great. And that is what we get accessory-wise. There are a couple more removable pieces, which I'll show you once we get into the figure itself. But yeah, pretty subpar lineup, especially for a deluxe figure. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the Endor Rebel. All right, and here is the Deluxe Rebel Commando out of the packaging, and the figure does look pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. However, there are still things that I really dislike about this figure, which is disappointing because this is one of my most highly anticipated figures of the year. I still do think it has a lot of great stuff going for it, but unfortunately there are just a few things that are really kind of head scratchers when it comes to this figure. Obviously we've already discussed the price, but again, there are some things with the figure that I would also like to point out as well. So let's not waste a whole lot of time. We'll go ahead and get him off the stand and we'll take a closer look. And so like I was mentioning in the accessories here, there are a few other removable pieces that just come on the figure itself. We do have this bandolier right here, which does have some paint apps on it. 
You get some nice silver there for like the grenades and all these little different bits right here. But then again, as soon as we get down to the pouch here, you can see quite a bit of paint detail missing there. Although we do also get some painted grenades or something along those lines, whatever those may be, I'm sure someone will let me know. But yeah, another little bit of frustration there because it's like, why paint all this and then just stop there? It's just a couple more hits on this little bag here and it would have looked so much better. The jacket is also technically removable, but you can tell it's really not supposed to be because the shoulders here do have this little sleeve that matches the jacket. But if you wanted to take it off, you absolutely could. However, underneath you can see here that it's just a plain gray plastic undershirt with some nice sculpted details there. And we do get a good look at those butterfly joints too. But in general, sculpting wise, I think the figure looks absolutely fantastic. Some really nice detailing on the face here. I like those piercing blue eyes and the photo reel's not too shiny this time around. The indoor helmet as well has some really nice silver paint details on it and even features a little bit of paint on the back there, which is surprising. On the shoulder here, we do get some more silver paint on this jacket and then on the front as well. And again, really nicely detailed. I think the textures and everything like that look great. We also have a belt here with, again, some missing paint apps. So we get a painted buckle there. No paint on the pouches at all here, which leads into the pants, which look great when they're like this in the neutral position. I think they did an excellent job on the camouflage. It really does look accurate to the movie and the sculpted details are really nice as well. However, when you go to bend the knee, you can see that, yeah, they did not paint it at all, which I mean, I kind of understand why they didn't paint it because it would probably just rub off over time. But at the same time, just paint it. You know, it's one of those things that looks really odd and the fact that they even showed it off in the promo images was kind of shocking just because of how jarring it looks. And then I also think that the way they cut the sculpt this time around on the back of the leg here with this pouch kind of looks really awkward. It's just from the back angle, so it's not a huge deal, but it is something that I noticed and I just kind of don't like the way that that looks. And then moving down to the boots here, again, no paint apps whatsoever. I think we definitely could have got some little silver bits for the lace loops. But yeah, just really not a whole lot going on here. And I don't mean to sound like I'm crapping all over this figure because I do think it looks really nice. It's just hard to stomach that $34.99 price when what we're getting here is just a little bit lackluster and was something that just three short years ago would have been a standard figure. But now that we've taken a look at the details here, let's go ahead and move on to the articulation. So it's pretty standard stuff this time around with the trooper here. The head can look up a decent amount and can look down as well. It's got the double neck peg in there. So you get 360 rotation, plenty of side to side head tilt there for you. And the shoulders do move all the way out and up. We do also get some rotation here as well. And like I pointed out earlier, we have some really nice butterfly joints as well. Just like most modern Black Series figures, we do get a single jointed elbow this time around. Gives us more than 90 degrees and has rotation. And thankfully the Rebel does have two trigger finger hands, both rotate around. And this one has a vertical hinge and the other hand has the horizontal grip, but you can see it is also trigger finger. For the waist, we do have a ball joint and it just goes forward not very far at all and goes back quite a bit, which is pretty much standard fare for Black Series figures. I really wish they would work on that forward crunch there. We do also get rotation and side to side at that point as well. For the legs, they can kick out pretty much straight forward. We get some really good split action, ever so small amount of kickback. We have the thigh swivel, a single knee here that reveals that horrible unpainted joint and it does rotate there as well. And then down to the feet, they can go down very far. They can go up just a little bit and they do also have ankle pivot here. So pretty standard black series articulation, nothing too crazy or different with this guy this time around, but you'll still be able to achieve all of those commando poses that you would want to with this figure. So crouching, holding the weapon with both hands and all that good stuff is not an issue for this figure. So I think the articulation is pretty nice. It does pretty much what you'd want it to for a commando figure here. Now, for those of you who are wondering about some customization options here, 
outside of what's included with the Endor Rebel, I do want to show quickly how the Han, Luke, and Leia ponchos and jackets fit from the Heroes of Endor slash those versions of the figures. Because we do see quite a few commandos with ponchos and jackets and other things on, and that's really another strong negative about this figure is we really could have got some other like soft goods and all they would have had to do was just reproduce the ones they've already made. So we got the Han Solo jacket here first and it is a little bit big for the figure but it kind of was a little bit big for Han as well. You could see the sleeve goes definitely past the wrist. And we do also have the Leia poncho here which I misplaced the belt for so it kind of doesn't fit too well on this figure but you know, if you had something to hold the back flap down, and if I had the belt and I could get it pinched back again, it would actually look pretty decent on this figure with just a smaller looking poncho. And here's the Luke poncho. Again, no belt on it, but you can see that it does fit pretty well, but has the same issues the Leia version would have when you don't have the belt on. So my pro tip to you today is don't lose the belt. All right, and now let's move on to some comparisons here. First up, we have an amazing custom figure from Skywalker Hendrix that was their own version of the Endor Rebel Trooper, and I think it turned out really nice. It's just basically a tweaked, modified Hoth Trooper. And then we have the actual Hoth Trooper as well, which again, when you see them side by side, you see all the customization options, you see the accessories that the Hoth Trooper came with. It really makes the Endor Commando sting just a little bit more. Next up, we have Endor Luke and Leia minus their ponchos, followed up by Endor Han and then the original Rebel Fleet Commando. Next, some Endor natives, we have Poplu and Wicket. Last up for the good guys, we have General Lando Calrissian and Admiral Akbar. And last but not least, we have a couple members of the Empire. We have the Archive Scout Trooper and the 2020 Stormtrooper. So my final thoughts on this figure is that it is definitely a really nice release from Hasbro, but unfortunately it is just far too overpriced. At this point, I would only really recommend this figure if you are a diehard original trilogy fan like myself or Justin. We are at least getting one at full price, probably going to play it out and try and get the rest on clearance. And I have seen that sentiment shared similarly across the community itself which is sad because i feel like if this was a standard figure it would sell like hotcakes pretty much just like the hoth rebel has but for some reason they chose to go the deluxe route with this figure and unfortunately i think it'll end up actually sending a negative message to hasbro because i can definitely see this figure hitting deep discounts just depending on how many are produced i suppose because yeah 34.99 for this figure definitely overpriced. I would really, like I said, only pick this up if you are a hardcore OT fan like myself or Justin. Otherwise, this one, probably a pretty easy skip. And so there you have it. There are my thoughts. This is a really nice figure, but it is just far too expensive. So hopefully you enjoyed my review. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. We're always talking about Star Wars The Black Series here on the channel. And if you'd like to support us in a more direct manner, we do also offer a channel membership. There is a link for that in the description of this video. Big shout out and special thank you to all of our current channel members. Your continued support is truly appreciated. And thank you to everyone else out there for watching. I'm Nate and I will see you next time.